Shalom, family. I hope you're a lot warmer than I am. <laughs> it is 18 degrees. The snow just stopped. It left quite a bit of snow. And it is windy on top of that. If you're in the Northeast, excuse me, you know what it feels like. It's a horrible feeling when it's cold and you got bone chilling wind. And that's what it's like. This is a definite stay in the house weather <laughs> and don't go anywhere. So Shalom family, it's good to see you all. We're going to enjoy another throwback from Brother L. I hope wherever you are, you're enjoying your Shabbat and making the best of it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're calling it a blizzard, um, nor'easter, bomb cyclone. It's all, all of it means a winter storm. So I think this is, this is our first real significant snowfall for the season. We had a little bit of snow, but it never really amounted to much. So let's go ahead and get started. Good to see all of you as usual. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, if you can see my screen, please give me a one. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All esteem to the Most High Elohim. This is your brother L. Let's begin at the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. The purpose of this discussion is to plant a seed of inspiration in our minds to motivate us to learn new skill sets that will make us able to thrive living off grid. We want to speak today about off-grid Hebrews, Hebrews living off-grid. Many of us are at different stages as it pertains to learning about the off-grid lifestyle. Myself and my family, we are in beginning stages of learning about this. And one of the main motivations about learning more about the off-grid lifestyle came from the scriptures themselves. That's why we want to go to the scriptures today and learn a lesson and see the example of our ancestors and how they were able to thrive and survive even off grid, how they had multiple skill sets that enabled them to maneuver even in the wilderness. Whenever we look at scriptures and it talks about the wilderness, a modern day term today for the wilderness is to live off grid. There were many times in our people's history where they went off grid, where they went into the wilderness they were still able to sustain themselves there. They were still able to provide for their families, even with living off grid. The particular time that we live right now, we live at a juncture in history to where there is so much knowledge at our fingertips to where with hard work, to where with being willing to learn, we can master multiple skill sets. We can master thriving and surviving on grid. And also we can master thriving and surviving off grid. We can be what I like to call ambidextrous, where we can thrive in any environment, in any scenario. There are people even right now who live their life mastering on grid with working with this technology, with using all of the resources available to them through the internet to thrive, and at the same time with mastering those skill sets to live and to survive and thrive on grid, they also have the ability to survive off grid. Knowing how to clean water in natural rivers, lakes, and streams. Knowing how to build their own homes with their own hands. Knowing how to hunt and gather. Knowing how to grow their own food. That's a very powerful combination, brothers and sisters, for us to be able to thrive on grid and thrive off grid. Today, though, the main focus is going into the scriptures to see how our ancestors were able to master both lifestyles. 
They could thrive in the city and they can thrive in the country. They could thrive on grid and they could thrive off grid. So this is a seed of inspiration and motivation, no matter what stage you are in learning about the, the off grid lifestyle, for us to be even more motivated to gain new skill sets, to learn new survival skills, hallelujah. So whether it be now or in the future, where you totally pursue or I totally pursue an off grid lifestyle, we will be more than capable through the strength of the most high and through the knowledge that we have attained from studying these things. All praise. With all that being said, let's go to Matthew chapter three, verse one through six. And one of the most famous examples in scripture of a brother who was an off grid survivor was John the Baptist. Our brother, John the Baptist, the cousin of the Messiah, an excellent example of a Hebrew that lived off grid. Let's go here. Matthew chapter three, verse one through six. It says, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. That means the brother John the Baptist was off grid. He was teaching and preaching off grid to stay away from the reach of the government, to stay away from the reach of many of the wicked. He lived off grid and sustained himself in that lifestyle, away from a lot of the temptations, away from a lot of the distractions that took place the more so in the larger city centers. That was the lifestyle that he decided to live. And you can also study about a group called the Essenes. The Essenes in the days of John the Baptist and the Messiah, where these brothers lived off grid and they practiced a more simple lifestyle. They were able to live off the land. They were able to thrive out there. And they spent most of their time in their life seeking the most high out in the wilderness, in nature, studying, having clarity of mind, free from distractions, living a simple lifestyle and putting in work for the most high to endure to the kingdom. Hallelujah. You can study more about those brothers in your own time, but we're speaking about John the Baptist right now and how he is one of the most famous examples in scripture of an individual who lived the off-grid lifestyle. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the most high, make his path straight. Let's continue to read. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins and his meat was locust and wild honey. This tells us a lot about the brother John the Baptist. Number one, it tells us that he lived the off-grid lifestyle. Number two, it tells us that he made his own clothing. He sewed together camel's hair to make his garments. That was his clothing. So the brother lived off-grid and the brother made his own clothing. He also had a leather belt about his loins. And it says that he ate locust and wild honey. Now, there's nothing in the scripture that says we have to have the diet of John the Baptist. So I'm not bringing to light John the Baptist diet saying that all of us need to eat like that. No, we just need to keep the laws and commands of Torah as it pertains to eating clean foods and not eating unclean foods. But this tells us that the brother John the Baptist was very disciplined in his diet. He was very disciplined in the things that he put in his mouth. He lived off grid. He made his own clothing and he was very disciplined in his diet. Here's something powerful to think about, family. The Messiah himself said that of all men born of women, there is no one greater than John the Baptist. Those words came out of the Messiah himself mouth. So what does that tell us about the benefits of the off grid lifestyle? If there's no man that has lived that is as great as John the Baptist, according to the Messiah, even above Moses and all them, isn't that something to think about? The Messiah out of his own mouth put John the Baptist even above uh, Moses, Enoch, Abraham, all those brothers. The Messiah said there's no greater man born of women than John the Baptist. And how did John the Baptist become that great? How did he become that set apart for the most high? 
one of the main keys to understand why John the Baptist walked in so much power in the spirit of the Most High is because of his off-grid lifestyle. Hallelujah. The brother separated himself from many of the other distractions that caused so many others to stumble. And again, brothers and sisters, I'm not bringing this out to say that we have to live like John the Baptist. We do not because the Messiah did not even live like John the Baptist. The Messiah rotated between being on grid and off grid. He was able to master both realms and he had skill sets where he can survive and thrive in both realms. He went out into the wilderness and was off grid for those 40 days and nights when he was fasting and seeking the most high. He often went to the mountains to pray. He often went off grid in order to pray and get clarity. That's one of the most powerful aspects of being off grid is you get so much clarity of mind. For those of you who have ever been to a mountaintop and been amongst the silence that is on a mountaintop, it is like nothing else. The clarity of mind and the peace and the serenity that you feel whenever you go to the top of a mountain, it's unexplainable and it cannot be compared to anything else. And the Messiah, the disciples, these brothers often went to these wilderness off-grid areas to get clarity of mind, to fast, to pray, to seek the most high, to separate themselves from the distractions that were primarily most found in the city areas. And for many of us, that's what it takes sometimes for us to go off grid for a season, for us to learn new skill sets, for us to be out there in the peace and calm. Hallelujah. Now, I wouldn't suggest brothers and sisters do this if they have not learned the skill sets of how to survive out there. Because even though there's peace of mind to be gained off grid and in the wilderness, it can also be a very dangerous terrain and environment. And that's one of the reasons we're having this discussion today to plant a seed of motivation and inspiration in brothers and sisters so that you and the other people in your household, you can begin studying the off-grid lifestyle together so that whenever you actually go out there in the wilderness, you have other brothers and sisters with you and y'all can sustain each other. Hallelujah. So let this be a motivation as we look at the example of John the Baptist, how he lived off-grid. He made his own clothing. He had a very disciplined diet and he was so focused and set apart for the most high that none of the distractions were able to take him off of his square and take him off of his mission of what he was sent to do for the most high. So John the Baptist, one of the greatest examples of how you and I can be motivated to learn more and to experience the off-grid lifestyle. All praise. Now, let's go to the book Writings of Abraham, chapter 19, verse 1 through 4, and let's see how uh, Father Abraham, Noah, brothers like that also practice the off-grid lifestyle. Whenever you read in the book of Jubilees, you'll also find out that Noah was, was a husbandman. Noah also had knowledge in how to use different herbs. He was also a very wise herbalist. He was able to gain those skill sets by living off grid. He was able to gain those skill sets by learning. He was able to gain those skill sets by practicing his craft, sharpening his craft. These brothers were not born knowing how to live off grid. It was learned. Same thing for you and I, brothers and sisters. There may be some of us out there that don't even know how to start a fire, but guess what? We can learn. We can learn. That's what we want to do is motivate each other here to learn how to master and survive in the wilderness and thrive off grid. Hallelujah. Let's go to writings of Abraham chapter 19 and learn about some of our ancestors and how they thrived off grid. Here's what it says. Shem, the son of Noah, ruled in the city of Shalom, and he was called Melchizedek, for he reigned as king under his father Noah and was a priest of the Most High Elohim. And after the departure of Ham from the presence of his father Noah, Shem and Japheth dwelt together in peace under the benign rule of Noah. But in time, conflict arose among them, and Noah led the seed of Shem to a new land, which the Most High showed him, where they built a city which they called Shalom, the city of peace. 
Here you see that Shem and his sons, Shem the son of Noah and his sons, they went off grid and they built a city called the city of Shalom. They built this city off grid in the wilderness. This was a place where they could study and learn the ways of the most high. And in the discussion a couple of days ago, I talked about how Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, all those brothers went to learn at this off grid site. They went to learn amongst Shem and those brothers. They taught them the ways of the most high. Now, I have to interject and say this. In these times that we live in, we have to be very careful and heed the words of the Messiah because what did he warn us about? He said in these last days, there would be individuals saying, lo, the Messiah is here. He is there. He's out here in the wilderness. He's over here in this secret place. So I want to issue a warning to brothers and sisters. It's one thing for us to talk about the off-grid lifestyle and learning how to survive and thrive off-grid. But if somebody is coming to you and telling you that the Messiah is on the earth now and he's somewhere hidden in some woods or some wilderness, don't go. Hallelujah. Do not go. The Messiah warned against that. With this discussion, we're not talking about somebody going off to some wilderness trying to seek some guru or some fake messiah or false prophet. What we're talking about is brothers and sisters learning skill sets to be able to survive and thrive off grid and in nature. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about no weirdo stuff. Are you joining some cult and going to the woods and all that nonsense? No, we're talking about learning how to survive off grid. We're talking about learning how to be self-sufficient, self-sustained. We're talking about learning how to make our own clothing again. We're talking about learning how to gain access to clean resources of water. We're talking about learning how to hunt again, camp again, grow our own food again, and to be able to separate from the distractions of society when it is needed. Many times in our culture, it has always been shunned for quote unquote black folks to be going out and camping in the woods. I grew up with that. You grew up with that. Many of us grew up with that understanding. Not all of us, but many of us. People always used to say, man, camping out, going out in the woods, that's that white folk stuff. Man, what y'all going out there to the woods for, man? What y'all doing out there? That's just weird. Like, what, what y'all some serial killers or something? What, why y'all going to the woods? What y'all doing out there? It always had a negative connotation. Camping out, hunting, gathering, living off the land, living off grid. It's We've had that false impression put in our mind that that is an activity that is only exclusive to the quote unquote white folks. Even in the Hebrew community, you hear a lot of these uh, Hebrews talk about, yeah, Esau was a hunter. That's Esau that be all out there hunting them deers and living in the woods and all that. But understand, brothers and sisters, that Esau learned how to hunt from Jacob. Uh, I mean, from Isaac. Isaac learned how to hunt and live off the land from Abraham. Abraham learned how to live off grid from Shem. Shem learned how to live off grid from Noah. And it goes on and on and on to Enoch all the way to Adam and those brothers. They mastered the off-grid lifestyle because at that time, there were not many technologies except the technologies that the fallen ones had taught mankind. But there was not much technology that we have today. So that was the lifestyle. In order to survive, you had to live off the land. You had to live off-grid. You had to master that lifestyle. So this is not a white thing. This is not an Esau thing. This is a practice and way of our people all the way back to John the Baptist, all the way back to Shem, Noah, Abraham. All those brothers were able to survive and thrive off grid. Hallelujah. So they had this area off grid, this city where they taught the ways of the most high and they were separate from the distractions of the world. Let's continue to read here. Verse three in writings of Abraham, chapter 19, it says, Noah invested his son Shem with the authority to reign as Prince of Shalom, the Prince of Peace. And Noah devoted his days to instructing his people after the order of the ancients. And his people dwelt in righteousness and worshiped the Most High their Elohim and served him. They established the order of heaven among them and sought after the city of Enoch. 
and the Most High came among them and ministered to them. And those who sought for the gain of this world went out from among them, for they held all things in common after the order of Enoch, and no man had above his neighbor. Right there in writings of Abraham chapter 19, it says that these brothers and sisters had a very disciplined community to where all the resources, all the food, all the wealth, they distributed it amongst themselves in that off-grid community. They had an off-grid community where each person had a skill set that they brought to the table to help the whole. Nobody went hungry. Nobody had to worry about paying the electric bill or the rent. No uh, single mothers had to, had to worry about being by themselves. Nobody had to worry about punching the clock in the nine to five. Their job every day was working the land. Their job every day was seeking the most high in prayer and fasting and worshiping the most high and keeping his commands. They had a thriving community. Hallelujah. And they lived off grid. This is how they were able to be so righteous and so in tune with the spirit of the most high because they had each other and they knew how to survive even in the most harsh conditions. They knew how to survive off grid in the winter. They knew how to survive off grid in the summer. They knew how to, sur to, to survive famine. I would encourage you to look at this documentary movie on Netflix called The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. It's about a young man in West Africa during the days of famine, he invented things to be able to bring water and wind to that famished community. And because of his ingenuity and his inventor gift skill set, he invented these things that helped his village and his community survive through the famine. And this is what I'm talking about, brothers and sisters, us using our Hebrew genius, our Hebrew brilliance, and our skills and skill sets and in inventive abilities to be able to thrive even in a famine. Hallelujah. That's what it's about, family, for us to thrive even in a famine. We have that knowledge. We have that gifting and anointing because the Most High made us from the earth. The Most High formed us. We were off grid in a garden, in the, a garden paradise wilderness where the Most High created us. He made us from the dirt of the earth. He made us from the earth. We are the people of nature. Nature responds to us. We respond to nature. Even the scripture says that nature itself cries out for the revealing of the sons of Elohim. We are those sons of Elohim. We are those people that are formed from nature. We are already in tune with nature. What has taken place is over these many millennia, we have been weaned off of our original lifestyle of being able to live off grid. But as the days go by, we are going to start getting more attached to that lifestyle. So right now it's time for us to learn those skill sets again. It's time for us, you know, maybe pick one uh, day or one weekend out of the month where you and your family go camp. Maybe you can start by camping out in your backyard just to get the feel of it. You don't got to dive into the deep end immediately. Start studying, start getting some tools here and there. You don't got to go all out and lose your mind and just spend your whole check on wilderness survival stuff. No, start little by little, little by little, brothers and sisters. Start here, start there, little by little. And I want to make one thing very clear. Having these skill sets to survive off grid is not going to be the entirety of our salvation. Having bug out bags, having weapons, bullets, all that stuff, yes, it's a necessity, but our salvation does not rely totally on those things. Our salvation is in the Most High and His Son. Only by the mercy of Yah do we survive. So in no way, shape, or form am I saying that learning how to live off grid and having all this understanding and having all these tools to survive, that that will be our total salvation. No, it will not be our total salvation, but it is an added benefit to have those skill sets. Hallelujah. Inevitably, it will be the most high that gets us through. There are some people that have all the bug out bags. They have all the underground shelters. They can survive butt naked in the winter. They, they can start a fire a hundred different ways. They have all that knowledge and understanding, but they don't keep the laws and commands of the most high. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They don't follow the Messiah. The Most High does not favor them. And even with all those skill sets, they still ain't going to make it through the things that are to come. Hallelujah. 
then you could have another brother or sister over here that doesn't have as much knowledge, that doesn't have as much tools or skill sets, but the father loves them and they love the father. They have the Holy Spirit and the Most High will work with them to learn quickly. The Most High will work with them and show them favor to survive. Then you have other brothers and sisters that have the skill sets. They have the knowledge and understanding. They're very equipped and they have the father's favor. Out of all those three examples, I would rather be that brother or sister that has mastered all these skill sets and the most high favors me and loves me and wants me to endure. That's the group of people that you want to be, the group that is in the most high's favor and you have all those skill sets and abilities to survive off grid. Hallelujah. So there you see it in writings of Abraham, chapter 19, verse one through four, that Abraham, Noah, Shem, all those brothers lived the off grid lifestyle. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to the book Martyrdom of Isaiah, chapter two, verse seven through 10. And let's see how Isaiah and the prophets also went off grid. Here's what it says in Martyrdom of Isaiah, also called Ascension of Isaiah chapter 2, verse 7 through 10. Here's what it says. And when Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw the great iniquity being done in Jerusalem and the service of Satan and his wantonness, he withdrew from Jerusalem and dwelt in Bethlehem of Judea. But there also was great iniquity, and he withdrew from there and dwelt on a mountain in a desert place. And with him Micah the prophet and Ananias and Joel and Habakkuk and Josab his son, and many of the faithful who believed in the inheritance of heaven. And they were clothed in sackcloth, and they ate the herbs of the field, which they gathered from the mountains, and cooked them to eat. And so they dwelt there for two years. Right there in that scripture, we see that all the prophets that wrote these books in scripture, Isaiah, Habakkuk, Joel, Micah, all those books you see in scripture written by these prophets, these brothers went and lived off grid for two years and wrote those sacred books. Ain't that powerful? These holy sacred books that still bless us so much today, the book of Isaiah, Joel, Amos, Habakkuk, all those books were written by brothers who at that time were living off grid. That's how they were able to get that understanding from the Most High. Their mind was open and they were able to receive that download from the Most High because they were up on the mountain where they could think clearly, see clearly, and be at peace. They were living off grid and eating the herbs of the field. Yet another example how our ancestors practiced the off-grid lifestyle. Do you see this? Hallelujah. Let this be an inspiration for you and I to learn to master these off-grid skill sets. Now, let's go to the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 29. Let's talk about the Maccabees boys. 1 Ma Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 29, it says, Then many seekers for uprightness and justice went down into the wilderness to settle with their sons and their wives and their cattle. So in the days of the Maccabees, they also went off grid to the wilderness, to the mountains to have a community, to have togetherness. They were able to find strength and resources in each, trouble, in each other by going off grid. Hallelujah. Think about these things, brothers and sisters. Meditate on these things. There's so many resources, so many videos, websites, links, so many courses that you could take to learn how to survive and thrive off grid. I pray that this discussion right here inspires somebody to begin to learn more about that off-grid lifestyle. It has definitely inspired me even the more so to stay on the path but that my family and I are on now, to go from the beginner stage of living off-grid to become more uh, expert at it and to master those skill sets. And I'll tell you what, brothers and sisters, we can do it together. It's all about us doing it together. Everybody has something to bring to the table. No man can do this alone. Sure, at the beginning, you may have to start seeking some of these things out on your own, but eventually we need each other. Hallelujah. So with that being said, I appreciate y'all for tuning in to this discussion. I'm definitely motivated to do a lot more discussions. 
here in the very near future. So stay tuned for that. I want to make the announcement of another channel that my wife and I have set up. It's called Hebrew Wealth and Hebrew Health. Hebrew Wealth, Hebrew Health. That particular channel, we're going to be talking about entrepreneurship, connecting with other brothers and sisters who are entrepreneurs and talking about ways that we can thrive on the grid and thrive in this society, put our minds together so that we can learn how to be owners. I want to open up that particular avenue for other brothers and sisters who have expertise in many different areas to come on the channel to uh, we can conduct interviews with you. You can tell people about your business, things of that nature. Also, we'll talk about some other products that we have. So those who feel led to do so, add that other channel. It's called Hebrew Wealth, Hebrew Health. Check that out. It's going to be some great things coming from my wife and myself on that channel. I'll put the link to that channel in the description box. Also, any entrepreneurs out there, brothers and sisters who have businesses, just reach out to me and tell me about your business. Email me at victorysuccessdestiny at gmail.com and I'll tell the brothers and sisters about your business. I had a wonderful sister reach out to me by the name of Wakitha Rahman and she has a very, very great business that she's doing where she has these young, uh, these, she has these toys and dolls for younger children and all of the dolls are melanated with beautiful woolly hair. And this is to teach our children to love the skin that they're in, to love their hair, to love their body, to love their heritage. So I'm going to put her link in the description box. Once again, the sister's name is Wakitha Rahman, and the website is www.foreverlovedolls.com. Once you see these beautiful dolls, I'm telling you, you will want your child to have them. Because a long time ago, they did a experiment where they had black children in a room and they gave them a white doll and they gave them a black doll. And their mind was so conditioned in the false view that they have of what's beautiful that they picked the white doll. They always picked the white doll as the best doll. So it's amazing and it's timely what this sister has done by having these melanated dolls for children so that our children can begin to choose themselves and love the skin that they're in again. So check out the link to the sister, Wakitha Rahman, and the business that she has with those beautiful melanated Hebrew dolls that she is making available to our brothers and sisters. Also check out another link to the brother James from Cleveland. He has some excellent pieces that inspire our people to know their greatness. I'm going to put his link in the box as well. He has some excellent jackets. I, so much, I, I, I can't even name it all. He has some excellent art on there as well. So check out his link. I always like to give our brothers and sisters shine. All the other Hebrew entrepreneurs out there, I love to tell my people about what other others are doing so that you can support them. And it can also inspire you to become an entrepreneur yourself. It's about ownership in these days. Hallelujah. Also, as always, I want to give shine to the brother over there at HR Fashion Store, Hebrew Israelite Fashion Store. They have those amazing shirts of the evolution to revolution. We would like you to go to Amazon. Those of you that are interested in purchasing those shirts, you've loved that image. The image went viral. Now those are being sold on Amazon. I'm going to put the link to those shirts where you can find them on Amazon. We put them on Amazon now because, number one, Amazon gets the shirts to you quicker. Etsy is a lot slower with delivering the shirts, but on Amazon, you can get those shirts a lot quicker within two to three days, actually, especially if you have Amazon Prime. So if you're interested in uh, investing and purchasing those Evolution to Revolution shirts, amongst the many others, check out the link in the description box where you can find those on Amazon. Also, want to remind brothers and sisters about the works and products we have from the ministry. We have the 613 Laws of Torah audio book that's narrated by myself because of the Most High and because of y'all. That audio book hit number one in the genre of Hebrew Bibles and Old Testament meditation on Amazon. All praise to the Father. It's a five hour audio book where we narrate all the laws and commands of Torah. The scripture says in Joshua chapter one, verse six through eight, that we are to meditate on the laws and commands of Torah. 
So we put together that audio book so that you can listen to the laws and commands while you at work, while you working out, while you going to sleep at night, while you in your car driving, you can have those laws and commands playing because scripture says faith comes by hearing. So as you play that audio book, you're listening to the laws and commands and it's giving you strength. It's giving you empowerment. It's writing the laws and commands on your heart. Hallelujah. So I'll put the link in the description box where you can find that audio book and invest in that. We also have the Words of the Messiah audio book, which is also narrated by myself. That's a four hour audio book with all of the most powerful interactions and parables of the Messiah narrated by myself. Four hours. I'll put the link in the description box where you can invest in that Words of the Messiah audio book. We also have the Words of the Most High Father audio book, which is a 14 hour audio book narrated by myself. It's all the words recorded in scripture that the father spoke from his own mouth or through the prophets all the way from Genesis, where he said, let there be light all the way to the New Testament, where he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. It's a 14 hour project with just the words of the father from his own mouth. Just like in most of these Bibles, they have the words of the Messiah highlighted in red. Well, in this particular audio book, it's all the words of the father that he spoke. We are highlighting and emphasizing all the words from the Most High Father that he spoke. Because after all, the Messiah said that the Father is greater. So we need to listen to the words of the Messiah. We need to listen to the words of Torah. And we also need to listen to the words of the Father. Hallelujah. With that being said, I thank you, brothers and sisters, for tuning in. Anybody that wants to reach out, you can find us at victorysuccessdestiny at gmail.com. Just shoot me an email. I always look forward to fellowshipping with brothers and sisters. Look forward to the next discussion. All praise to the Father. Let's continue to endure till the end. Shalom. All right, y'all. That was great. I'm sorry I wasn't really on there. Um you know, just talking to you or saying hello, like I always do the connection. And I have a feeling this is weather related. Um, it, my connection is just exceptionally slow. And when I was typing in, it was just lagging. It was just a pain. Um, Michelle Harvey, I have never used um, the Zoom chat. Now I've been on Zoom um, a lot of my family members that live all over the country, every now and then we go on Zoom um, together. It's just a bunch of my cousins and we talk, but usually somebody else is officiating it. I, I have not done it once, but I'm sure it works great. I mean, a lot of people, it's probably one of the most heavily used um, products out there as far as people gathering together. So. Uh, in all honesty, they can't make it complicated because, you know, a lot of people would have to use it just like YouTube. I mean, they can't make the chat complicated. Otherwise, you're going to discourage people from using it. Yeah, well, y'all, you know, I hope everybody is safe and sound and get those prayers in because look at the society. Our Heavenly Father are listening to us. He is. He's hearing these prayers. You know, we want the captivity to be officially over. We do see the decline of America. In fact, the whole world sees the decline of America. And just keep praying. Because right now is probably the best time to be alive. I mean, who'd have thought even... 10 years ago, we would see America in the state that it's in. I mean, it's shocking. But at the same time, our father kept his word. He's not going to let us down. He's showing you, you know, each and every day where it's not going so well for them, he's fighting for us, his children. So hang in there, y'all. It, there is going to be bumpy roads ahead. You know, you saw that video I put out with Russia sending 
blood and medical supplies to the border. Now, why would you be doing that unless you expect casualties? You know, I think they're anticipating a lot of casualties. That's why they're sending that stuff there. Otherwise, you know, what would be the purpose unless they know something is about to jump off? And remember, blood got a shelf life. It can't sit out there forever. You know, at a certain point, if it's not used, it's got to be discarded. So, I mean, just think about that blood. Don't, you can't just sit that somewhere and it's going to be okay. So, hey, all praises to our Heavenly Father. Please enjoy your Shabbat and we'll be coming back together again to do this next week. Shalom, family.